You're listening to the Audacious Church Leadership Podcast. We know this will be an incredible resource for your life. So stay focused, listen up, and thanks for joining us. Hey, everyone. Welcome to this, an Audacious Leadership Podcast. My name's Paul Reed. As some of you will know, I'm part of the team here at Audacious, and you are an extraordinary leader. So this session is about you growing, increasing your capacity to lead and influence, and you made a great decision by choosing to be here right now. This session, I want to talk to you about being a spiritual leader. You are a spiritual leader. It might seem obvious or something that you would see as a given, but in this session over these next few minutes, I want you to explore, think, and ultimately discuss with others about this notion, this idea that there is something that separates you, sets you apart from any other leader or any other person, and that is that you are a spiritual leader. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 33, something really amazing about this subject, and it's right back in the Old Testament, and it's from Moses, the sort of uh, celebrated father of the faith, the, the leader of millions, the success story of a leader. And I'm going to read to you from Exodus chapter 33, starting at verse 12. It says this, Moses said to the Lord. Now see if you recognize Moses' words in your own head and heart. Moses said to the Lord, you've been telling me, lead these people, but you've not let me know whom you will send with me. You have said, I know you by name and you've found favor with me. If you are pleased with me, then teach me your ways so I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Remember that this your nation, this nation is your people. In other words, you've told me to do this, God. Now help this task of leading people. You've been telling me lead these people. You told me to do it, and yet here I am, not exactly knowing what I'm doing. Don't forget, these are your people, Moses says to God. I'm only doing this because you asked me to do it. And then God replies, In verse 14, the Lord replied, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Then Moses said to him, if your presence does not go with us, then do not send us up from here. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us? What else will distinguish me and your people from all the other people on the face of the earth? The Lord replied to Moses, I will indeed do what you have asked, for I look favorably on you and I know you by name. Moses responded, then show me your glorious presence. Five things that I want to share with you. And this is how to be a spiritual leader. Verse 15 in the New Living Translation puts it this way. Moses said, if you don't personally go with us, don't make us leave this place. Verse 16, how will anyone know that you look favorably on me and on your people if you don't go with us? Then listen to this key phrase, for your presence among us sets your people and me apart from all the other people on the earth. In the NIV, it says it distinguishes us. So here's the key for this whole session, and then we're going to do the how-to, is that you are a spiritual leader, and the presence of God, the Spirit of God, is the distinguishable thing about you. There are lots of leaders around your life, and maybe at work, and Uh, in other contexts, but what sets you apart as a leader in the house of God and what sets you apart as a leader of Christians is the presence of God. The spirit of God is the one distinguishable thing. And Moses understood that. That's why he said, if you're not going to go with us, 
then don't send us. You've given me this job of leading these people, but I can't do it without you. And that is a real powerful truth that we need to understand because if you're trying to lead in your own strength, if you're trying to lead um, with your own creativity and your own ideas alone, then you're going to find that resource comes to an end. It's it's finite in the sense that it has a, a use-by date. It has um, a limit. But God is infinite and he and his spirit in you and on you is what empowers you, enables you, and enables you to be a leader that is not just great now, but is great tomorrow and will still be great 10 years from now because you are a spiritual leader. So five key ingredients on how to be a spiritual leader, each one with a few applications. So make sure you open your head, uh, open your head, open your heart, open your ears, and, uh, and get ready to write this stuff down. If you've got a, 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 a space on your phone, write it on that. If you're listening to this while you're out for a run or you're doing something else, you're driving in the car, then I don't know, you're gonna have to create some space to pull over and write some notes down. But here they are, f- five big things. Number one, how to be a spiritual leader. Number one is pray. Spiritual leaders pray. Verse 12, right at the beginning of this passage, the Bible says, Moses said to the Lord. God has given you this task, this challenge. Even the least spiritual feeling leadership task that you have, I believe it's because God has recognized, uh, God has called you to be a leader. And a, a person, a human being has recognized the call of God on your life, put you in that position. Therefore, you need to pray. Four things under this heading of prayer. Number one, pray for the people under your leadership. I wonder if you could create a new habit that makes sure every single day you're praying for the people that you're leading. When you do that, it helps you be more grateful for them. You develop a culture of gratitude. Um, It helps you um, sort of create space for them in your heart as well as in your mind. And there are certain things about the people that you're leading that only God can do. So make sure you're praying for the people under your leadership. Pray with the people under your leadership. I don't know in what context you're applying this session today, but if it's with other Christian leaders, then you should be the one that initiates, instigates, creates a habit that says, you know what? Let me pray with you about that. You're not the answer. Jesus is the answer, but you're not just pushing it back on them. You're saying, hey, let's pray about it. So pray with the people under your leadership. Pray before every leadership context that you find yourself in. If you drive into a meeting where you're going to be the leader, before you get out the car, why don't you just pray and say, God, I need you for this meeting or this session or this project that I'm about to do. If you're about to do something publicly, maybe you're going to lead on a platform or on a stage somewhere. Before you do it, pray and ask for the Holy Spirit to anoint you for that task that he's given you. And the fourth thing about prayer is why don't you pray to start and or end every leadership context that you do. You've got a meeting, loads of people around the table, they're catching up, they're feeding back on stuff. Why don't you be the one that says, hey, you know what, before we start, let's pray. Let's pray. Or at the end of the session, you've worked hard, you've come up with some new ideas, you've all got loads of work to do and the rest of the day is kind of chomping at the bit, ready to get going with. But before you let everyone go, why don't you be the one that says, you know what, before we go, we're going to pray. If you want to be a spiritual leader, if you recognize what Moses recognized, which is don't get me to do this without you, God, then why don't you be a person who always prays? Number two, how to be a spiritual leader, number two, is personal devotion. In verse 14, um, God says in response to Moses' question of like, come on, help me out, God. He says, I will personally go with you, Moses, in the NLT, it says. So it's this idea that God is your source and there is no shortcut, fast track, uh, new fangled idea that is ever going to replace your personal devotion, your personal walk with God. So quite simply, one thought on this is 
Make sure you're spending daily time with God. I know it sounds obvious. And if you're a spiritual leader, you would take it for granted that that is what's happening. But you know, and I know, it's easy to live your life for God, but not with God. We're doing great things to build the kingdom and help advance the mission of the church and the vision that God's put in your heart. But listen, don't just live for God, live with God. Every day, carve out time. We send our devotions out to all those who subscribe. That's one way you can do it. Maybe you're reading the Bible through uh, in one year. Maybe you're doing the Bible shred. But whatever it is, make sure you do something that will mean you can spend time with God every day. Another thought on personal devotion is keep a journal. I don't know about you, but I forget like the most important things in my life, my anniversary, my children's birthdays. But when I write it down, that really, really helps. So if I'm ever really trying to remember something, I write it down. Someone tells me in a pastoral situation, oh, I've got a job interview this week, or you know what, I've got this really important thing this week. I normally open my diary right there and then and put it in my diary so that when it comes around, I remember. And it's the same with um, personal devotion. Make sure you're writing down in a journal, on your phone, online, wherever you want to do it, chronicling, recording the things that God is saying so that you can come back to that and it just crystallizes your thoughts through that discipline of writing it down. Third thought on personal devotion is um, have a structured plan for reading the Bible. I don't know about you, but I've been a Christian since I was 16, which is sometime. And, um, you know, I've done all sorts of different plans. And there's times when I find myself when it comes to opening my Bible, kind of not really knowing what to do. Do I just pick a random verse? Do we do the eyes closed, spin the finger, point to a word and see what it says? All those things are okay, I suppose. But I reckon come up with some structured plan for reading the Bible. Are you going to read one book for a whole month? Are you going to read one chapter a day? Are you going to read through it in a year like we said before? But actually decide on a plan and stick to it. Even if someone else comes up with a different plan or a better plan, you come up with your plan and stick to it till you get through to the other side and then choose something else. Fourth thought on personal devotion is um, to consider how you can dig a little bit deeper. I'm talking about praying and reading your Bible every day, but is there something that you can do to go a little bit deeper? Here at Audacious, we have um, what we call Audacious College, which is designed especially for that. And if you want to go a little bit deeper in the word, if you want to get your sort of archaeologist gear on, metaphorically speaking, and go and go and do on a bit of a Bible dig, then sometimes you need to sign up to something or join with others. And Audacious College is perfect for that. If you want to sign up to any of our short courses on Audacious College, make sure you visit the website, audaciouschurch.com. And uh, you can find out all about that there. So how to be a spiritual leader, number one, pray. Number two, personal devotion. Number three is practice God's peace. Practice God's peace. Um, God said to Moses, Um, I will give you rest is one of the things he says. I will personally go with you, Moses, in verse 14, and I will give you rest. Everything will be fine for you, he says in verse 14. A few things on peace. Firstly, don't worry. Philippians 4 says, don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. And we already said in point one, to be a spiritual leader, you've got to pray. And also, That is linking into this point about practicing his peace because instead of worrying, you can pray. When we worry, we rehearse or go over what might happen and we draw a negative conclusion. The Bible says in Hebrews that faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance in what we don't see. Assurance means to declare something that gives confidence. And so you actually are exercising faith when you're worrying because you're, you have an assurance in something that you can't yet see. You're just giving confidence to something bad that will happen instead of something good. So instead of using that faith, exercising that faith to worry, why don't you exercise that faith to practice uh, or to give confidence to an assurance in the goodness of God that will lead to his peace? Uh, second thought is this, diary regular stops Because when you take a moment to exhale, get a different perspective, 
ask for the Holy Spirit to give you his perspective, then that verse from Philippians that I read that says, don't worry about anything, but pray about everything, goes on to say that doing that will guard your heart and mind. And if you need peace, then the arena in which it's going to arrive and have an impact is in your heart and in your mind. So why don't you take five minutes every day, not necessarily just to pray, not to read your Bible, but just to stop and allow God and his peace to flood into your life and into your heart, as we said. Another thought is get a different perspective. Sometimes when you're caught up uh, in leadership responsibility and you're trying to manage everything and trying to carry everyone's issues, then you need another perspective. So why don't you um, invite someone else um, have a coach or a mentor or someone in your small group or someone who's uh, in the ministry that you're involved in or whatever it is, but have a third party, you, God, and another person who can come alongside you and give you a different perspective. Another thought on peace is this, learn the unforced rhythms of grace. In Matthew 11, um, Eugene Peterson put that that verse, the words of Jesus where he said, come to me, those of you that are tired and heavy burdened, I will give you rest. Eugene Peterson gave us this great phrase when he was paraphrasing that verse, where it said to learn the unforced rhythms of grace. What I mean by that on this piece is that um, to make sure you're doing only what God has asked you to do and you've not picked up any other responsibility along the way. It's easy for us to Uh, become the answer to the world's problems. And then we wonder why we don't have peace and we feel stressed. Whereas God has asked you to do one or two things. And if you do just those, then the grace that comes with that means you can take it in your stride. You can can increase your capacity. You can do better. And if you're feeling too stretched as a leader, too stressed, it might be that you've picked up some extra responsibility along the way that's not falling under that grace, that unforced rhythm of grace that God has when he asks you to do something. Uh, And it's worth just remembering that Jesus is the savior, not you. Four. Okay, so how to be a spiritual leader, number one, pray. Number two, personal devotion. Number three, peace. And number four, practice his presence. Number three was practice peace. Number four is practice his presence. Uh, Moses said to God, your presence among us sets your people and me apart from all the other people on the earth. This is the crux of the whole session. And that is what I started with in my intro, which is it is the presence of God that is the distinguishable thing about you as a leader. The answer to the problems in the lives of the people that you lead is you carrying the presence of God, not you coming up with the solution. So how do we do that? Firstly, practice gratitude. Um, Before I go into a meeting, like I was saying earlier about praying, one of the things that I do is I try to think of at least one or two things that I'm grateful for about each of the people that I'm leading in that meeting. Because what that does is it changes the posture of my heart and gets me positioned ready to be, uh, I guess, a little kinder, a little bit more understanding, a little bit more determined to keep going when it gets frustrating. So practice gratitude. Also practice worship. Every now and again, I have a a music fast where I say, I'm not going to listen to anything but worship for a month. And what that does is it just helps me uh, get into that rhythm and routine again of actually taking a moment to worship God and and praise God. And by doing that, you're practicing, you're remembering or acknowledging that you are in the presence of God. Practice faith. We already talked about it in the previous point. Worry is practicing faith that something bad will happen. Whereas if we uh, practice faith in the goodness of God, it means that what we don't see, so what tomorrow holds that we don't see, instead of filling in what we don't see with a negative, we fill it in with a positive. Not based on just positive thinking alone, but based on confidence that comes from understanding and knowing the goodness of God. And if you want to know that, then go back to the personal devotion point and make sure you read your Bible because it's full of promises about the goodness of God. Another thing just on presence before we finish is to practice his presence in all that you do. 
I've already mentioned it before, but let me just remind you, even the tasks and roles and different things that you do as a leader that don't feel that spiritual. Maybe you're working with numbers and budgets and trying to get things to balance that way. Maybe you're working with, I don't know, just planning something really practical and, and, and organizing. Listen, God has called you to do this and you need his presence even in those things. So when you're doing your your sums and budgets, make sure there's faith in the mix. Make sure you're practicing his presence in everything that you do. The fifth thing, how to be a spiritual leader is be prophetic. The voice of faith. Verse, uh, the next chapter, Moses goes on and after having this conversation with God, comes back down the mountain and the Bible says, uh, in verse 31 of the next chapter, it, uh, chapter 34, Moses called out to them, the people, and asked Aaron and all the leaders of the community to come over and he talked to them. So what Moses did, he took the voice of faith, or for this context, he took the presence of God and he spoke it out to the people that he was leading. And if you want to be a spiritual leader, there is a part of you that needs to be someone who speaks prophetically. So that is speak positive as well as being a realist. The two can coexist. Um, speak and declare scripture. Don't just say your thoughts, but declare scripture. Uh, I would say engage in the rhythm of church life because um, it's a chance to have face time with the people that you're leading, especially in a, a season where... Um, there's restrictions in place. Do your best to engage with the rhythm of church life, whatever that looks like. And then paint a picture of the future for other people to see. I've got three questions for you to discuss. Obviously not right now, but you'll have listened to this. And when you get to your leadership life group, you can have these three questions. Let me just remind you five ways to be a spiritual leader. Pray, personal devotion, practice peace, practice his presence and be prophetic. Question number one, what is God currently speaking to you about right now? When you're in your small group, make sure you uh, discuss this. And this will really push the issue on personal devotion. Make sure that you're actually spending time with God because he is speaking to you. Whether you're listening or not is the next, the next thing. But question number one, what's God currently speaking to you about? Question number two, when you think about tomorrow or the future, what are the things you rehearse or go over in your mind and how can you switch them from being negative to positive? So this is the Hebrews 11 concept we talked about. When you think about tomorrow, what are the things you rehearse and go over in your mind and how can you switch them from negative to positive? And the third question, the last one is, what can the rest of your group pray for you about? This is that third perspective, inviting others into your um, your life and leadership. Three questions. Make sure you discuss them well. Be the one that leans forward and has answers ready and uh, really engages the group in conversation. Thanks for being part of this podcast and uh, have a cracking time. See you soon.